sponsors, Spruce Mountain Granites, Trowel and Holden Company, and Voss and Giacomo de Torre and McQuestin helping to sponsor this show. Yeah, give me a hand. So I think this is the second stop on this tour of the 61st year. God, how could that be? Of, of Bread and Puppet. So folks, have a great afternoon, enjoy, and thanks for coming. traditional dances of death for the anonymous victims. to you our first dance of death.
are we? What awaits us? of death number two.
are we? Who? Where do we come from? Where are we going? What are we waiting for? What awaits us? Principle of Hope. 
We Palestinians suffer from an incurable <laughs> disease called hope. Mahmoud Darwish, who was expelled from Palestine with his family at age seven during the Nakba. And though his family returned and settled near Haifa, he was permanently banned from Israel in 1973 and resided for the rest of his life in Egypt and Lebanon. are we? Dance of Death, number three.
wishes. intend to be.
a letter to Secretary of State Antony Blinken from Dr. Tariq M. Haddad, cardiologist and professor at the University of Virginia School of Medicine. Secretary of State Blinken, thank you for the invitation to the round table scheduled for today on the Gaza genocide. I have decided that I cannot in good conscience meet with you today, knowing this administration's policies have been responsible for the death of over 80 of my family members, including dozens of children, the suffering of hundreds of my remaining family, the famine my family is currently subjected to, and the destruction of all of my family's homes. The more I thought about this meeting, the more I could not emotionally bring myself to look you in the eyes, Secretary Blinken, knowing you and President Biden have knowingly contributed to the suffering and murder of so many of my family, the homelessness and disposition of two million Gazans, and the famine that has befallen my remaining family members. could have prevented the death of my family members and the nearly 15,000 children in Gaza who have been killed, but actively contributed to their suffering and death by providing military ammunition from our US military supply to kill my family and destroy their homes. <laughs> How do I look you in the eyes for three minutes, the three minutes that have been allocated for me to speak, knowing you couldn't even do the basic minimum, like calling for a ceasefire to end the suffering and carnage, and even worse, are cutting off humanitarian assistance to two million people going through a famine of historic proportions? <laughs> There is a me medical acronym unique to the Gaza Strip being frequently used that I have never heard any physician in the Western world use. WCNSF. WCNSF. Which stands for Wounded Child No Surviving Family. Wounded Child No Surviving Family. Secretary Blinken, this is a stain on our humanity that this acronym exists. I'd like to give you a bit of my background and that of my family as my story in many ways is symbolic of what so many Palestinians have endured over the past 75 years. I grew up as a child in Han Yunus in the Gaza Strip. As a child, I experienced the brutal nature of the Israeli military occupation firsthand. I remember playing chess in the street as a 13-year-old and getting shot with rubber bullets by Israeli soldiers. I remember watching my cousins either get arrested or have arms broken while I hid in a chicken coop to escape military detention for the crime of being a Palestinian child playing in the street. Oh. 
I remember the Israeli soldiers breaking into our grandmother's house in the middle of the night in the 80s, using it as a scouting area to snipe at children in our neighborhood and eating out of her refrigerator while she slept. I remember our beautiful orchard between Han Yunus and Gaza City, filled with olive trees, prickly pear fruit, and endless fruit trees that we played in all summer, destroyed by the Israeli military tree by tree. I remember in the summer of 2014, my youngest son, Ramzi, was born. A day that we will never forget for the wrong reasons, because it was the day of the Shujaia massacre in Gaza, when 67 people from one neighborhood were killed by Israeli military strikes, mostly children. We never celebrated his birth. On November 2nd, three of my cousins, along with my aunt, were all killed. My surviving cousin from that family, Nail El Haddad, sent us this message about that fateful day and its aftermath. inside the house together. My mother, my brother Hani, his wife, my brother Whale, and my sisters Wafa and Huda. Suddenly they were targeted with an F-16 missile directly without any prior warning through the corridor. They were deliberately targeted based on where they were at the time when the attack was done. They were killed instantly, except for my brothers who initially had minor injuries. My brother Hani then died from those injuries the next day because the Israeli military siege around him, the Israeli military's destruction of all the nearby hospitals, and the lack of medicine or electricity led him to bleed to death. My other brother, Whale, suffered a serious wound along his foot, but miraculously survived with God's kindness and generosity. However, he had to witness our own mother with half of her body buried under the rubble and his sister Wafa shredded into pieces. My brother Hani's wife and my sister Huda's bodies are still missing. I still don't know where they are. On October 21st, my family in Gaza received a flyer dropped on my cousin's home in northern Gaza by the Israeli military, along with 1.1 million other civilians overnight, that stated, Your presence in northern Gaza puts your life in danger. Whoever chooses to not leave southern Gaza to northern Gaza to southern Gaza may be identified as a partner of a terrorist organization. Secretary Blinken, if this isn't the very definition of collective punishment and genocide, assuming that if innocent civilians don't leave their homes with nowhere safe to go anyways, that they will be treated as military targets, I don't know what is. On another day, I received this message from a cousin who has four children and gave birth to twins two months ago. The Israeli military told us to evacuate, but I'm stuck here. I'm not able to evacuate with my children to leave, and I don't know where to go. We need all the world to save us, to see what's happening to us. I'm so scared for my children. The Israeli bombing is indiscriminate, 
They've destroyed homes on top of people's heads. Please, please, someone see us, do something, save us from what we're facing. February 25th, senior airman Aaron Bushnell self-emulated outside of the Israeli embassy in Washington, D.C. His final words were, free Palestine. is process. 
It is the widely ramified mediation between present, unfinished past, and above all, possible future. What is driving the now also surges forward in the future into something open. The wish builds up and creates the real. The new thought finally breaks out into the open, unfinished, reeling world. The tomorrow in today is alive. Empire. 
taxpayers' budget called defense. Meaning aggression. Call defense. Meaning aggression. Call defense. Meaning aggression. Now actively engaged in running the latest horrendous genocide. Democratically elected, now openly fascist administration. How will we be allowed to die? How will we be allowed to die? As victims of empire designs. <laughs> Neglecting all carefully constructed human safeguards. International Convention. Neglecting all carefully constructed habits of decency and morality. reach their uninterested ears. Will we invent new yells? New yells. That are harder to neglect. Harder to neglect. Hey, 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 No, no. To 
kill no. them? No. no, no, no. The publicly declared intention. No. The publicly no. declared intention the publicly to intention. kill them all. Civilization lost, lost its, its right, right to, to exist. exist. My thoughts that my thoughts that I often mount the sky go search for me. Where nature all in nature.
Court and everyone from the old Labor Hall for having us today and also feeding the company. Woo! Thank you so much. This was the second stop on our three-week tour of the Northeast and Eastern Seaboard. Tomorrow we will be playing in Rutland and then Albany, New York on Tuesday, and then we'll be traveling further south from there. You can check our website for more details. Please spread the word to any friends and family that might be on our route. In just a moment, we will serve bread and aioli right where I am standing. The Bread and Puppet Press Store and the Cheap Art Emporium will be open for your perusal. All of the cloth banners that you see hanging up in the audience space are not just decoration, they are also for sale. So please uh, take it off the line if you're interested in purchasing. Last but not least, here at Bread and Puppet, we still believe in one great nation, and that is the donation. Please see a hat on the way out if you are able. Thank you.